Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday. And today we have Bob Sager and Adam Rosenzweig joining us as well. Welcome to Thriving in the Modern Economy. Um, Bob, want to introduce yourself to everybody for any of those that don't know you. And Adam, I'll let you do the same and I'll introduce myself last. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Bob Sager. I'm the founder of Spearpoint Solutions. And we do predominantly training work in helping people with, learn the science and art of purposeful creative thinking, an essential skill set for those who want to thrive in the modern economy. Adam, go ahead and take a couple seconds to introduce yourself. Adam's our special guest today. He'll be talking uh, during the time that we're on the show today, but I uh, want you to get an introduction from him first, and you'll hear from him a little bit later. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Adam Rosenzweig. Like you've heard, I am the founder of our R&D Marketing. We help unite emotional intelligence with uh, human resourcefulness and talent because uh, emotional power is the foundation of all of our success. So I am a specialist in emotional intelligence. I use emotional intelligence analytics and tools to help do that as well as coaching and to help people be more successful. And that can be applied toward sales and creativity as well. Excellent. Thank you. We'll hear more from you in a little while. And for anybody that doesn't know me, I'm Chad Johnson. My business is Best Life Ventures. And what I do is I help professional salespeople make prospecting suck less. We all know that in professional sales, especially B2B sales, that prospecting has changed dramatically over the past couple of years, um, especially resulting from uh, the pandemic a few years ago. And what I do is I help professional salespeople build limitless pipelines in under 90 days, where right now they may be struggling with cold calling and emailing to find enough contacts and enough prospects. I help them build that limitless pipeline in under 90 days, showing them new techniques uh, and skills that are necessary to sell in the modern age. And uh, with that, gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into my presentation and, and uh, bring you back on in just a little while, if that's okay. Absolutely. One of the things that's really, really gets me going is I get questions and, and direct messages and emails every day from salespeople from all over the world. And one of the things that uh, I get asked the most is, how do you find limitless opportunities? How do you fulfill that claim? And the thing to remember is, is that our prospecting is all about scale. That's why we make a lot of cold calls or we send out a lot of emails because it's always about how can we reach a large number of people with our message and start building that interest. And the buyer's journey, the buyers themselves, especially in B2B, have dramatically changed the way they want to buy. And with that, we have to find out where we can meet them with our message and scale, which is why I've got my friend Tommy Boy behind us today, because as we all can remember from the movie, he was famous for setting his sales presentation on fire. One of the biggest things that I hear from salespeople all the time is that, hey, I don't have any problem presenting to people. I don't have any problem giving demonstrations and closing isn't an issue. It's finding enough opportunities. It's finding enough new prospects. And that's where the world has really become a different place. And so what I want to do is share with you a little bit of information about why that is and how we can combat that here over the next few minutes. So let me get my screen going. What's happened is twofold. Uh-oh. I don't know if you can see my screen or not. Hang on. Apologize for the technical difficulties here. Still getting used to the StreamYard platform. Gotta love technology. What's happened here is a, is a twofold thing. The internet uh, provides so much information and so many opportunities for people to learn and, and discover things on their own, research them and explore them on their own. And then you've got the fact that we also have a different set of buyers in their roles today. So you've got twofold. The odds of actually finding an interested buyer anymore are almost zero. Reason being is they're consumers just like you and I. If someone's interested in something, whether it's for their business or in their personal life, the first thing they, they think of is, oh, let me go 
to the internet. Let me Google it. Let me search it. Let me look for products, services, people, reviews. They aren't thinking I need to talk to a salesman or they're not thinking I need to talk to this company because I know that they handle these types of products. They do it on their own and they don't need to talk to us right away and they don't want to. Let's be honest. Uh, you think about it. I know for the past more than a decade, I don't answer many phone calls. I don't answer, you know, many cold calls uh, for years uh, when I was in corporate America. I didn't. I had somebody review my voicemail messages for me. If I knew the number, I answered the phone. If I didn't, I didn't. And if the voicemails weren't somebody important that maybe I missed, that I didn't recognize the number they called from, all those voicemails got deleted. And I'm sure a lot of you are the same way. You see now on your cell phone, scam likely or telemarketing or something like that. Do you answer those calls? Probably not. And if you're not answering those calls, why would you expect your customers to be any different? Why do we expect our customers to be any different than we are? Same thing with emails. My email inbox gets filled every day. And it's just, you know, I, I put up spam regulations. Most of them go to the spam filter before I have to do that. And if, some, if, if I get persistent emails from someone or an entity that I don't want to get them from, I block them so that they can't send them to me anymore. Again, you probably do the same thing. Your customers do the same thing. So our cold calls and our emails have become far less effective than they used to be. And we don't have any control with our cold calls of how many people are going to answer the phone or with our emails, how many people are actually going to look at those emails, possibly click through and respond to them. So that starts taking the scale out of our prospecting efforts. And that's why we're seeing such a major decrease in those traditional methods in generating opportunities, in finding actual new prospects to, to talk to. So where do we get our scale? Well, as it turns out, the best place to do it is where they are, where our buyers are, just where we are when we're interested online. Here's some interesting uh, buyer statistics right now that are happening in B2B. And these are brand, this is brand new information just came out January of this year. And that is that 75% of B2B buyers use social media to make their buying decisions. 50% of B2B buyers use LinkedIn almost exclusively as their most trusted source to find product services and the people that they want to talk to about those particular products and services. And 92% of the buyers of the 50% that, that use LinkedIn, and even of the 75% in total, 92% of those buyers engage with salespeople who are well-known thought leaders in their industry. Now, what that means is that they see a lot online, that they've seen good, relevant information from, that they know these people, hey, they understand my problems. They, they are addressing the issues they have. They've solved these problems before. They've proven themselves to be experts. And, of course, like we just talked about a little bit ago, you know, 90% of decision makers don't answer cold calls anymore. They aren't taking them. It's not that they won't take a call from someone they don't know, but if they are going to take a call from someone they don't know, it's going to be by referral. Somebody else is going to have introduced them or said, you might want to talk to this person. It's not going to be from a cold dial. Even leads, I know, you know, from just recent past years, you know, in large companies, even the leads that come in through marketing, they've got phone numbers, they've got emails, and how many times do you call them and you never catch that person, you never get a response. And you're thinking, but they sent in a lead. Why didn't they want me to contact them? Well, they really wanted information. They didn't really want to talk to you. That's why using tools like LinkedIn are especially important in this day and age. And that's why social selling is so effective. The great things about it is, is it provides a benefit that we've always been looking for. We always know exist. We've been saying for years and years and years in sales, all the old platitudes, people buy from people, people buy based on who they like, things along that line. Well, the best way to get people to know you and like you and begin to trust you is to see what you know, to see what you have, to what your solutions you provide and what problems you address. And by putting your information and by putting relative relevant content online, you have the opportunity to craft that story or narrative any way you want. Think about how many times you've made cold calls or you've talked to a potential client and you get off the phone and you're like, dang, I wish I could have said that. Or, wow, I didn't get a chance to throw this particular piece of information out there that might have made a difference in their thought process because they didn't have the time, they didn't want to talk to you at that moment. 
and you didn't get the opportunity to say it. But with your content online, you get to tell the story the way you want. And the best part is, is when someone's online and they're doing purposeful looking to find your types of products and solutions and people like yourself, they want to read that story. And you get to tell those things that you never did before to really create those interest points, those advantage points, and make them ask themselves those questions. Um, it's seen when your prospect is, is receptive. They're there intentionally looking online. They want to see what you're seeing. So you're not invading. You're not an annoyance in their day. And it allows the prospects to also see what other people are saying. It takes that burden of social proof off of you. If they see a bunch of other people have liked, commented on your content, then they're like, hmm, there's probably something to this. The, the last part is, is that you get to drive your potential clients to some internal conclusions. And you always want to drive your customers, your potential customers to five, as many of these five potential thoughts in their mind as possible when they're looking at what your content shows. Hey, I've asked myself this same question. Uh, you know, I have that problem or I've had that problem before, or I fear I'll have that problem in the future. This person seems to understand my business and seem to understand me. Uh, they seem trustworthy. The information I know that they're giving is real, it's true. You're, you're giving honest feedback. Um, and then you lead that, that person to say, you know, I probably should talk to this, I should probably talk to this person. So you get the opportunity to really craft that narrative, craft that message, generate the interest, build a little bit of, of curiosity in them, and start that conversation because really that's what it's all about today. It's not about pitching or, or, or elevator speeches or any of that. It's about starting a conversation, learning about your prospect and by talking to their problems versus trying to talk them into giving you time. That's how you do that. And that's where social media comes in the strongest. So that's my bit for today. I wanted to share that with you. If you uh, have any questions, you can DM me here on LinkedIn. You can also email me at info at makeprospectingsuckless.com. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take us back to Adam Rosenzweig, and he's going to talk to you for a couple minutes about emotional intelligence and what he does. And I'm excited to share this with you. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring Adam back up on screen. Just one moment. Welcome back, Adam. And, and uh, here you go. So I wanted to share a little bit about how important emotional intelligence is in the sense of self-awareness, because self-awareness is a term that we hear a lot about, but we don't really think a lot about what it means. What it means is to be aware of my own emotional state and why I'm in that emotional state and how that's affecting my behavior and how it's impacting other people as well. It's really the foundation of emotional intelligence because I can't problem solve or handle stress or do anything else if I don't even understand where I'm at emotionally. So a tactic that you can implement right now that will help you in your work is to simply pay attention. It doesn't have to be complex. It just requires intentionality. So what does that mean? That means paying attention to how you're feeling at least three times a day, right? Around breakfast time, around lunchtime, around dinner time, simply write down somewhere whether or not you're feeling good, whether you're feeling neutral or whether you're feeling negative. And do that every day over the course of two to three weeks. And just don't try to change anything, just pay attention to the pattern. And by the time you get to the end of those two to three weeks, you re-examine what you've written down and look for look for the patterns and see what you find. So for example, what does this look like? Well, you might find that you are feeling extra stressed around lunchtime. And then you can start thinking about what am I, what's happening around lunchtime? And then you can make adjustments. Maybe your emails are starting to stress you out because you're feeling overburdened with the amount of work you have to do. Once you understand that, you can make problem solving uh, techniques, put them into place. So just paying attention and not only throughout the day, but even before important events or important meetings, because if I f pay attention and realize that I'm feeling extra stressed, before I'm about to give a sales presentation, I have to put in stress management techniques to be able to calm myself down. And maybe I do that even before I go into the presentation because if I'm so stressed and I'm thinking about me, there's no way the client's gonna feel like I'm thinking about them. So those are my two minutes.
on how to be more emotionally intelligent. Thank you, Adam. We're going to go ahead and, and bring Bob on. And Rob, I'm, I'm really looking forward to what you're going to talk about with purposeful creative thinking today. So I'm going to turn it over to you and let you share your screen. Hey, so, uh, yeah, thank you, Chad. Uh, something that Adam did not mention there uh, is he has a, a mini self-awareness workshop uh, document that you know, covers some of the things that he just said, or excuse me, covers all the things he just said and uh, has some other uh, great information in there. And, and he has been generous enough to make that available at no charge. So feel free to reach out to Adam or, or me or Chad. We've all got access to uh, that and, um, and, and we're happy to make that available to you. So let me uh, jump into, we've got some very, uh, very cool stuff we're going to share with you here today uh, about uh, purposeful creative thinking. So uh, when I do live training, uh, whether it's virtual or especially in person, one of the things that I talk about is, is this concept here. Doors are big, hinges are small, but doors swing on hinges. And listen, that is the way it is uh, <clears throat> in innovation. When people think about innovation, usually what comes to mind is innovations that are huge, right? Transformative, like the iPhone. But the reality is it's often just everyday innovations, 1% uh, improvements weekly, monthly, that over the long haul, those are what really transforms a, a business or transforms a life. Um, I want to share with you something that I think will help uh, with your mindset in terms of what your life could look like. Now, there was a, a she's uh, passed on now, but this uh, autobiography in five short chapters was written by Portia Nelson. And I heard Dr. Wayne Dyer uh, give this in one of his uh, meetings that he that he gave a few years back. And I just thought it was the greatest thing ever. So I want to share it with you. Uh, chapter one, I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Chapter two, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. But it isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. Chapter three. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. It's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Chapter four. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter five, I walk down a different street. So when we talk about purposeful creative thinking, the science and art of purposeful creative thinking, what we're really teaching you how to do is stop walking down that same street and start walking down different streets. Open up your mind, take it off of that autopilot. What we're going to talk about today is a creative thinking method that, that we train on. We're going to give you the basics today. There's no way in this short amount of time we can teach you everything, but this will get you started. It will get the ball rolling. It will get you started thinking differently. Uh, and the method we're talking about today is go opposite. Oh, by the way, before I jump into that, if you missed last week's training, uh, we talked about combinatory play and, uh, there's a LinkedIn live replay available of that. It's also available on YouTube. If you need the link, uh, reach out to either me or Chad. We'll be happy to provide it for you. But uh, having said that, let's jump into go opposite. 
I love this quote from Max Licato. He said, a man who wants to lead the orchestra must turn his back on the crowd. And listen, in the age of artificial intelligence, that's even more important than it ever has been. Um, if the crowd is all doing the exact same thing, you're going to be perceived exactly like they. Um, so when we're talking about go opposite, we're thinking about here's how you go about utilizing this method. First, Think about the way things are done currently and write out a statement. This is how this is. Um, I, here's a, an example that comes top of mind. Restaurants serve food. Well, that seems opposite, right? Well, what would the opposite of that be? Uh, excuse me, that seems obvious. What would the opposite of that be? Restaurants don't serve food. Well, what kind of restaurant would not serve food? Well, think about that as a kind of a thought experiment and see where it takes your mind. So when we're talking about go opposite, here's a great example of go opposite. Um, we write down something about employee recruitment. We find qualified people. We hope they resonate with our mission and we try to as best as we can to fit them into our company culture. Now listen, up front, if you're a recruiter, if you're an HR person, if you're an interviewer, you're trying to determine that right away, but it's not always possible, but that's the goal with most companies. What if instead, what's the opposite of that that might work? We have a mission in company culture. What if we implemented a program whereby we pay people to leave after a trial period? The way that way only people who really want to be part of our company mission and culture will stay this will improve improve our employee engagement and productivity and you notice the zappos logo up there in the corner uh, zappos did exactly this they implemented a program where after it was a brief trial period i think it was a week it might have been 30 days i don't recall exactly but they would pull people aside and say look Here's $2,000. We will pay you this $2,000 to leave right now, no hard feelings. And what they found is that the people that were willing to leave their employment for such a short, uh, small amount of money, they really weren't into the company culture and, and attitude. And so most people did not take it, by the way. Um, and, and so they found that once people did not take that, they were in, right? They were totally in on what Zappos was doing and how they uh, did it. So a few years back, Amazon actually acquired Zappos and in many of their divisions, Amazon I'm talking about, they implemented this same thing. And they, I think they took it up all the way to $5,000 uh, that they'll actually pay people to leave. Now that's not true in every uh, Amazon facility, but in many of their divisions, that is true. And they find that once people take that or, excuse me, turn it down, they're into what they're doing uh, and, and they have really bought into the company. So it, it's a very, very powerful method. I want you to try this out with some of the things that you're doing in your company. Now, having said that, let me, uh, let me go over here to... We've got uh, for for next week, we do these every, in case this is your first time tuning in, we do these every Wednesday at noon Eastern time. So uh, you could, I highly encourage you to register for it um, because even if you can't attend live, you'll easily have the replay link. So for next week, if you caught the first two, of these, this one and the previous one where we talked about the uh, combinatory play method, we have a challenge for you. Uh, and that is next week, we're gonna be introducing a new feature on this, and that is ideas from the audience. So take anything that you wanna come up with an idea for, your business, uh, a hobby, a product or service, whatever, uh, and apply these methods to it and Technology is great when it works. So using either 
either the purposeful creative thinking method of go opposite or combinatory play, come up with an, an idea for improving, improving an existing product, service, or business, or, or completely uh, come up with an idea for a brand new one. And if you're going to participate in this challenge, we will send you some written instructions. All you got to do is reach out to me and say, hey, Bob, I'm in. Uh, send me the instructions and uh, sort of a little mini coaching course. And next week, on next week's um, session, we will share two or three of the best ideas that people come up with, and we'll give a shout out to the other people that uh, had the courage to participate. So here's how to, uh, you can reach out to Chad via his LinkedIn, uh, that's right there on the screen, or me via my uh, LinkedIn. So um, I'm looking forward to, uh, seeing what you guys come up with for next week. And um, we've got a couple minutes left here. I think I will uh, I think I'll turn it back over to Chad to uh, uh, wrap it up for us. Thank you, Bob. Um, I think, uh, Adam, I, I'm not sure if you gave people a, a way to directly reach out to you about emotion, emotional intelligence either. So you might want to do that real quick, give you a second to do that. Yeah, so B Bob, thank you for filling in for the mini course as well. They're welcome. Anybody who wants to uh, contact me, you're welcome to uh, DM me and connect with me on LinkedIn. That is the best way to get a hold of me. Um, just contact me there. Get, if, you, if we're not connected yet, just make a personalized message saying that you saw me here and we can take it from there. But yeah, that's the best way. Okay. <clears throat> also, uh, along with the challenge to bring your business uh, opportunities or challenges that you may be facing or ideas or help that you may need with purposeful creative thinking and generating new ideas for your business that Bob mentioned. Always send any questions you have about prospecting, selling, all of that to me. I've got 30 years experience in, in sales and B2B from you know, frontline sales leader all or salesperson all the way up to a VP of sales. And um, I, I, I love helping salespeople be successful. So please send that in. Our sponsor for this show was SpherePoint Solutions. Bob, I'm going to go ahead and, and let you take a couple of seconds and talk about our sponsor. Hey, listen, uh, a couple of things I forgot to mention. Um, anybody that is, especially if you're seeing this live, but frankly, I, I think I'll even let it go on the replay. I just released uh, recently a brand new book. Uh, it's called More Freaking Brilliant Ideas helping you thrive in the age of artificial intelligence. And so anybody that reaches out to me, um, we'll give it 48 hours. Anybody that reaches out to me within 48 hours of seeing this, uh, they can get a PDF copy of that book at no charge. So awesome. Um, yeah, that's uh, hard to beat free, isn't it? Um, so, but the other thing, uh, the, our, our sponsor is the, uh, our, brand ambassador program, which is an affiliate marketing program. If you are looking for a great way to earn a second income, or frankly, you can make enough money with that program to, to make a living um, and a pretty good living if you're willing to work. So if you're looking for something like that, reach out to me and I'll uh, provide more information about that. Chad, we're uh, almost at uh, the half hour mark here, aren't we? I think we're right on time. So with that, I'm going to say everybody have a great rest of your day and week. Have a great weekend. And we look forward to seeing you next week with some new information and some new challenges. And who knows, we might have a special guest that we haven't announced yet. So anyway, take care, everybody. Have a good one. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Take care.